saw a person standing there, but it was clearly not a human being. This thing had a human-like shape to it and a clear place for the eyes and the nose and the mouth, but it wasn't a person. In 1946, an eight-year-old girl vanished and reappeared under mystifying circumstances in a United States national park, leaving scientists and enthusiasts puzzled to this day. But what could cause such an event to occur? Join us as we dive into the depths of this confusing case and its puzzling details. Located in the northwest Arkansas Ozark Mountains, Devil's Den State Park is known for its stunning rocky wilderness and scenic beauty. This nature preserve became the setting for a mysterious event in the summer of 1946, one that even scientists can't explain. The disappearance of eight-year-old Catherine Van Alst. Catherine was on a family vacation, staying in a cabin deep within the park. This trip was intended to celebrate her parents' 25th wedding anniversary. But it took an unexpected turn when Catherine vanished under ordinary yet mysterious circumstances. Catherine's disappearance happened during what should have been a short and routine walk from a nearby creek back to her family's cabin. However, she never made it back, leading to her sudden vanishing. The alarm was raised quickly by her family, and an immediate search began. Catherine's father took the lead in organizing a search party, rallying other park visitors and staff to aid in the search. The search operation spanned several days with the purpose of extensively checking the entire area. The dense forests and rocky terrain of Devil's Den presented significant challenges, making the search difficult and long. Volunteers and family members combed the area around the cabin and creek, but with each passing day, hope of finding Catherine safe began to reduce. The local sheriff and other authorities joined the efforts, expanding the search to cover a larger area of the park. On the sixth day of the search, the story took a remarkable turn. Catherine was found alive, a discovery as relieving as it was bewildering. She was located in a cave, an astonishing 30 miles away from the family's campsite, and at an elevation 600 feet higher than their cabin. The circumstances of her discovery posed numerous questions. The distance and terrain between the family's cabin and the cave where Catherine was found were extremely difficult to navigate especially for an eight-year-old child. The lack of provisions like food and water and appropriate clothing made her survival and journey even more confusing. How did the eight-year-old manage to travel this distance and through such challenging wilderness? Portage Chadwick, a University of Arkansas student who was part of the search team, described the moment of finding Catherine. She calmly responded to a call from one of the rescuers with a simple, here I am. Remarkably, she emerged from the cave wearing only a swimsuit, with no visible injuries or signs of distress. After her rescue, Catherine shared some details of her incident. She mentioned spending the first night after her disappearance lying in the grass and subsequently finding shelter in caves. She survived by eating wild berries and drinking water from natural pools. While these actions show her resourcefulness, they did not clarify her journey and how she reached there. The case of Catherine Van Alst in Devil's Den State Park remains a mystery and a subject of intrigue. Another fascinating case that follows the confusing nature of the Catherine Van Alst incident in 1946 is that of the disappearance of a group of German tourists in Dithvalle National Park in 1996. This incident, known as the Deeth Valley Germans, involved four tourists, Egbert Rimkutz, his girlfriend Cornelia Meyer, and their respective sons, Georg Weber and Max Meyer. The group's journey began in Las Vegas, where they rented a Plymouth Voyager minivan for their holiday. After spending two weeks in Las Vegas, they checked out of their hotel on July 22nd, planning to visit various national parks, including Yosemite. However, they never reached their destination, and on July 27th, they failed to board their return flight to Germany. The mystery began to unfold on October 21st, when their abandoned minivan was discovered off-road in the scorching heat of Death Valley. 
Investigations revealed that the group had taken an ill-advised route, possibly based on directions from a guidebook. This route took them through the Furnace Creek Visitor Center, which was the last confirmed location where the Germans were seen. After leaving Furnace Creek, they visited several tourist sites, including an abandoned mining town called Warm Springs. The group signed a logbook here, noting their intention to cross Mengel Pass, a route known to be challenging. It's believed that upon realizing the pass could not be crossed, they tried to backtrack, but ended up on another unsafe road leading down Anvil Canyon. The fate of the group became clearer in 2009, when the remains of Egbert Rimkus were found eight miles from where the minivan was abandoned. Nearby, the remains of Cornelia Meyer were also discovered. Unfortunately, the children's bodies have never been found. The discovery of these remains brought some closure to the case. However, questions about why the group wasn't found earlier and the exact circumstances of their deaths remain unanswered. Another case strikingly similar to that of Katharine van Alst is the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It was the site of another mysterious disappearance in 1969. This time, the subject was six-year-old Dennis Martin, who vanished on Father's Day weekend during a family camping trip. The incident took place at Spence Field, near the Appalachian Trail, which is a popular spot within the park. Dennis, along with his father, grandfather, and younger brother, was joined by family friends and their two sons for the camping excursion. The group had planned to spend the night at Spence Field. The boys, including Dennis, started playing a game of hide-and-seek in the nearby overgrowth. However, Dennis did not reappear with the other children when the game concluded. Immediately concerned, Dennis's father, William Martin, began a search for his son. When there was no sign of Dennis after a few minutes, the urgency of the situation escalated. William and the others split up to cover more ground in the search. By 8.30 p.m., Dennis's grandfather had reached the park's ranger station to alert the authorities. But by then, heavy rain had begun, complicating the search efforts. In the days following Dennis's disappearance, the search party grew to nearly 1-400 members, including local volunteers, park rangers, and the U.S. Army Special Forces, known as the Green Berets. Despite this large-scale effort and worsening weather conditions, no trace of Dennis was found. Over time, footprints believed to belong to Boy Scouts in the area were discovered near a stream, but retired park ranger Dwight McCarter speculated that these could have been Dennis's. The search officially ended in September 1969, with Dennis presumed dead. His father, however, held on to the belief that his son had been abducted, citing the proximity of a road where a car could have easily been waiting. This theory gained some attention when, a few days after Dennis's disappearance, the key family, who were also in the park, reported hearing a disturbing scream and later saw a hairy man walking in the woods. Some accounts suggest that this man carried something red over his shoulder. Dennis had been wearing a red shirt when he went missing. In 1985, an illegal ginseng hunter claimed to have found skeletal remains believed to be those of a young boy. But by the time the area was searched, the bones had disappeared, likely scattered by animals. The mystery surrounding Dennis Martin's disappearance remains unsolved, leaving open questions about what truly happened to the young boy in the Great Smoky Mountains. In another haunting case from 1946, Paula Jean Weldon, a 19-year-old sophomore at Bennington College in Vermont, mysteriously disappeared. Her case, similar to that of Catherine Van Alst, remains unsolved and contributes to the eerie lore of unexplained vanishings in America's national parks and wilderness areas. Paula's disappearance occurred on December 1, 1946, after she told her roommate she was going for a hike on the long trail in the Green Mountains, a scenic and rugged area of Vermont. Dressed in hiking attire, Paula set off from her college dorm, seemingly prepared for a few hours of exploration. However, she never returned, leading to an extensive search and investigation. Local witnesses reported seeing Paula walking along Route 67 and then onto Route 9 near Bennington, heading towards the trail's entrance. 
A lumberjack claimed to have spoken with her and directed her to the start of the long trail. This was the last confirmed sighting of Paula Jean Weldon. The search for Paula was vast and involved local authorities, volunteers, and even students and faculty from Bennington College. Despite the efforts, which included tracking dogs and aerial searches, no trace of Paula was ever found. The snowfall on the night of her disappearance further hindered the search efforts, covering any potential tracks or clues. The disorganization of the local police force at the time complicated the investigation, which led to a chaotic and misdirected search operation. Various theories emerged, ranging from Paula getting lost and dying to the possibility of foul play. Some speculated about her personal life, suggesting she might have eloped or run away, but no evidence supported these theories. The case took an odd turn when, a few days after her disappearance, a waitress in Massachusetts reported serving a distressed young woman matching Paula's description. However, this lead was never confirmed, and the mystery of Paula Jean Weldon's fate persisted. Nearly 80 years later, the case of Paula Jean Weldon still remains a mystery. These are not the only missing persons cases to come out of national parks. Many others are part of this list too. Morgan Heimer's case is a particularly confusing one. He was a 22-year-old experienced trekker and employee of Tour West, a rafting company. Heimer was last seen bringing rafters back from a swim in the Colorado River. He was known for his outstanding swimming skills and familiarity with the terrain, which is why his sudden disappearance on June 2, 2015, during an eight-day excursion, puzzled everyone. The lead tour guide noticed Heimer's absence only when he failed to return for dinner, despite being confident in his abilities and knowledge of the area. A six-day search continued, but Morgenheimer has not been seen since. The disappearance of Drake Kramer, a 21-year-old geology student, in Grand Canyon National Park also adds to the list of these mysterious cases. Kramer was an experienced outdoorsman. One day, he unexpectedly set out to travel to the Grand Canyon, leaving his car at the Bright Angel Lodge. He ventured along the South Rim alone. His decision was abrupt, following a cryptic message to his mother about needing to set his soul free. Despite the extensive search efforts and his familiarity with the terrain, no trace of Kramer has been found, leaving questions about his fate unanswered. Similarly, Ruth Ann Ruppert, an experienced climber who had conquered Mount Kilimanjaro, disappeared in Yosemite National Park in August 2000. After waking up with an eye infection and missing her backpacking group, Ruppert rented a tent cabin in Curry Village and then vanished. Her supplies were left behind, which was out of character for an experienced hiker. Oddly, eight years later, her backpack was found in Fireplace Creek, eight miles from Curry Village. This has since deepened the mystery of her whereabouts. The case of 14-year-old Stacy Ann Aris is particularly unsettling and much like that of Dennis. While on a guided tour at Yosemite National Park with her father and others, Stacy went to take pictures near a lake but never returned. Despite a massive search effort involving helicopters, dog teams, and nearly a hundred people, the only trace of her was a camera lens cap. No evidence of harm or clues to her whereabouts were ever found, leaving her disappearance a haunting mystery. George Penka's story is another confusing disappearance in Yosemite National Park. While hiking with a church group in a well-traveled area, got separated from his companions. Penka was not an experienced hiker, which was even more worrying. Last seen at 2.40 p.m., he was reported missing later that night. Despite the trail's popularity and the extensive search efforts, no trace of Penka, his belongings, or any indication of what happened to him has been found, leaving his fate unknown. Thelma Pauline. Polly Melton, a regular visitor to the Smoky Mountains in North Carolina, vanished in September 1981. Known for her love of hiking, Melton was hiking with two friends on an easy trail when she moved ahead over a small hill and disappeared. Notably, she left without any personal belongings or necessary medications. Over a year later, a check in her name was cashed in Alabama, 
but her disappearance remains a mystery. Speculation about her potentially running off is countered by her known attachment to the mountains and her established life. Michael Fisery, an experienced hiker with a strong memory for trails, went missing in Yosemite National Park in June 2005. He had embarked on a solo hike in the less-traveled Hetch Hetchy Reservoir area, planning to reach Lake Vernon, but later changing his route. His family grew concerned when he failed to return after his permit expired. A massive search operation, including the Marines, found only his bag with a map, water, and camera. Despite his experience and no signs of distress before the hike, Fisery's disappearance remains unsolved. Similarly, Floyd Roberts III, a frequent visitor and experienced hiker of the Grand Canyon, disappeared on Friday, June 17, 2016. Roberts was last known to be hiking with his friend Ned Bryant and Ned's daughter Madeline. He took a different path around a hill and never rejoined them. Despite being well-equipped with food, water, and a map, he vanished without a trace. The search operation, hindered by the remote and hot terrain of Kelly Tanks, yielded no results. The lack of any evidence or sighting since then deepens the enigma surrounding his disappearance. On January 13, 1980, Paul Fugate went for a hike to check a trail and mysteriously never returned. Paul was known for his love of the mountains. He was a naturalist who engaged with visitors, curated exhibits, and created trail guides. On the last day he was seen, he left without his radio, ID, or wallet, simply stating his intent to check a trail. As the only permanent staff member at the park, his absence was quickly noticed, sparking immediate concern. The park offers numerous hiding spots but showed no clues. Despite extensive searches in the challenging and rugged terrain of the park, no trace of him was found. The efforts to locate him included a significant reward for information leading to Fugate's whereabouts, but this has so far proven fruitless. The lack of closure continues to affect both his family and the wider community of park rangers who knew him. Although theories have been proposed, ranging from accidents to foul play, they remain speculative without concrete evidence. Teresa Trenny Gibson, a 16-year-old high school student, vanished from the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in October 1976. On a school trip to Klingman's Dome, Gibson walked ahead of her friends on a trail and was never seen again. Despite being in an area crowded with hikers, there were no witnesses to her disappearance. Search efforts, hampered by bad weather, found no trace of her. Officials report that in Tennessee, approximately 400 individuals are reported missing annually. This equates to about five people per 100,000 residents each year. The lack of evidence and the circumstances of her disappearance have fueled speculation and mystery for decades. These cases, spanning across various national parks in the United States, highlight the mysterious and unknown nature of these protected wilderness areas. The stories of these missing people highlight the inherent risks in exploring these remote landscapes and emphasize the confusing mysteries that these natural wonders can hold. The mysterious disappearances in national parks reveal a pattern that continues to puzzle both authorities and the public. These incidents highlight the reality that wild spaces can be unpredictable and sometimes dangerous, even if they are beautiful. The common thread in these cases is the sudden and unexplained nature of the disappearances, often in well-traveled areas known for their natural beauty. Also, the challenging terrain, including dense forests, steep cliffs and remote regions, complicates search efforts. Weather, wildlife, and the landscape significantly add to the complexity of these cases. Even human factors like inadequate preparation, misjudging the terrain, and potential foul play have crucial roles in these disappearances. From a scientific standpoint, experts in wilderness survival and psychology offer insights into these mysterious disappearances. Survival experts emphasize the importance of preparation, including knowledge of the terrain, weather conditions, and basic survival skills. They point out 
that even experienced hikers can find themselves in hazardous situations due to sudden weather changes or unexpected injuries. Psychologists explore the human aspect, examining how individuals might react in stressful and disorienting situations. Panic, confusion, and disorientation can lead to poor decision-making, further adding to the danger. In cases where individuals are found alive after prolonged periods, psychologists are interested in the coping mechanisms and survival strategies they use. In addition to scientific explanations, these mysterious disappearances have given rise to various paranormal and conspiracy theories. Some speculate about supernatural elements, suggesting that unexplained forces or entities could be involved. These theories are often fueled by the peculiar circumstances of the cases, such as the huge distances covered by individuals or the lack of physical evidence left behind. In the world of mysterious occurrences in national parks, many conspiracy theorists talk of the legend of the chupacabra, often reported in these wilderness areas. They are thought to be responsible for these missing people. Originally hailing from Puerto Rico, the chupacabra, which translates to goat sucker, gained its name due to incidents involving the mysterious deaths of farm animals, drained of blood and bearing marks of something with fangs. While it began as a Caribbean legend, the chupacabra's tale has since become associated with the southwestern United States and Mexico. The integration of the chupacabra into the unexplained disappearances and strange sightings on nature trails and national parks fuels diverse speculations. Some wonder if such a creature could be responsible for the mysterious vanishing of individuals in these areas, or if its supposed presence signifies a deeper, unexplored aspect of these wild spaces. The creature got significant attention in Texas following a peculiar incident. A camera outside a zoo captured an image of an unusual, canine-like creature standing upright. This image prompted many to suggest that it was the legendary chupacabra and that it could be amongst the creatures causing disappearances on the trails. This sighting only fueled the ongoing debate about the existence of the chupacabra. While some believe the creature is a yet-to-be-identified animal or an undiscovered species, others remain skeptical. They attribute such sightings to misidentified wildlife especially animals suffering from diseases like mange, which can cause hair loss and altered appearances. There are numerous other conspiracy theories as well, including ideas about government cover-ups and secret organizations being involved. These theories typically arise from dissatisfaction with official investigations or from the mysteries surrounding the disappearances. Although mostly speculative, such theories highlight our natural inclination to find answers for what seems unexplainable, particularly when standard explanations don't suffice. These cases have contributed to changes in how national parks manage visitor safety and influenced cultural and media portrayals of wilderness exploration. Following these incidents, there has been an increased focus on enhancing safety measures in national parks. This includes improved signs, and better circulation of information regarding the risks associated with specific trails or regions. It also called for more rigorous protocols for responding to missing person cases. Park authorities have also increased their efforts to educate visitors about the importance of preparation, such as carrying adequate supplies, informing others of their travel plans, and understanding the challenges of the park's terrain and weather conditions. Training for these teams has become more specialized, focusing on swift and efficient response techniques. There is also a greater emphasis on using advanced technology, like drones and GPS tracking, to aid in search operations, making them more effective and far-reaching. The mysterious nature of these disappearances has captured public imagination, leading to an increase in media coverage and cultural representations. Documentaries, Books and online forums have explored these cases, often combining factual reporting with speculative theories. This coverage has heightened public interest in the mysteries of national parks and the wilderness more broadly. These cases have also influenced local folklore and narratives, with communities near these national parks 
often incorporating the stories into their culture. This has created a dual perception of national parks as places of natural beauty and mystery, but also potential danger. Thanks for exploring with us on Beyond Discovery. If you enjoyed these revelations, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen. It's unbelievable.